video again, buddy. We're going to find some little limbs and gum brows and things for the lizards. Okay, so me and the little fella are outdoors, aren't we mate? There'll be a sun in your eyes. But uh, we've decided to come out for a bit of a walk. We're going for a bit of a cruise just to see if we can get ourselves some tree limbs, some, some gum branches and some plant limbs of some description, just like little cuttings and things that I can add into the monitor enclosures and into the reptile room, just to give them a little bit of enrichment. I thought I'd better get the cheeky guy outside as well and get him some sunshine. No? Because just like a lizard, you need a little bask. But we've just stopped in the park for a couple of minutes. Just let him have a bit of a look around, have a bit of a sit in the shade. And there's also a gum tree here that, you know, occasionally drops some pretty good hollows. So I'm just going to see if there's anything hanging on the ground for later. What are you reckon? <laughs> You're so cheeky. What are you reckon? Hit the road? Keep going? Keep going? <laughs> so nearby to where I live we've got loads of national park and a lot of that kind of like butts up against a lot of the housing and quite often what that means is we get a good offshoot of all these plants and stuff that start growing out of the national park and the council comes along and trims the hell out of them anyway and just tosses everything out so I figure if I kind of walk this strip, take a few cuttings here and there, it's not really doing any harm to, well it's not doing any harm to the park. It also just gives me something that I can pop in with the animals from time to time. <laughs> Somebody's very excited. So the beauty for me is because I use these particular holders in my enclosures, I never have to take the same type of plant. I can always vary it up so then there's different smells, different pieces for my animals to get into. It just kind of creates a bit of a different environment all the time for them. Probably one of the most important things too is just to make sure you don't overdo it everywhere. You know, just take a little bit from here, a little bit from there. Yeah, and then it all goes back, doesn't it, mate? So I reckon I've got to be the only weirdo that takes his son for a walk so he can fill up a pram full of goodies. What are you give it? <laughs> Ready for some lunch. <laughs> Almost to the top. <laughs> there you laugh. One day you're going to be pushing me around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you gonna tell mum how we cleaned up? Oh my 
<laughs> Are you getting down to curl too? Clean out the tan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are you trying to get your hands on the Sonic again? Yes. Hey. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Should we get in there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna be gentle. It's okay. He's a bit wigglier than last time, isn't he? Nice, Nick. You sit with my mind, you can pat him. <laughs> gentle. <laughs> good boy. Oh, good boy, so gentle. Are you laughing? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so the little fella's down for a nap, so hopefully he's drifting off into some slumber. And we've got this beautiful, lovely collage of all different types of cuttings here for the animals to peruse. And basically, if you haven't seen this before, I've got this system in my enclosures where essentially I'm using little bits of PVC pipe that I've kind of tried to camouflage. You can see one there, almost similar to what people use at the zoo or zookeepers use at the zoo for things like koalas to put their gum branches in for the koalas to eat from. So I'll put a link to the video where I actually made these uh, little holders and you guys can go and check that out. But basically I can just replace branches as needed and you can see that there's some old branches still kicking around here like this gum here. There's an old twig and Billy's thing over here. Uh, but yeah, basically it's just a way for the animals to have something to actually interact with, get some new fresh smells, and just a little bit of enrichment in their lives. Mars, nothing can break me, no, nothing can break me. Ooh, 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 ooh. Look at these beautiful stars, I wanna drive a faster car. Depending on what kind of cuttings I have and how many I have of each type of cutting, I don't mind actually stacking them up and putting a couple of different varieties in some tanks. Sometimes just even doing some little simple flower cuttings like the wattle that I had there. That's just enough to give some really nice rich smells or sweet smells to some of the lizards to actually get into. And you combine that with things like gum branches, for example, which are a bit of a stock standard favorite here, then yeah, you get a kind of nice combination. The first interaction I saw was from little old Sonic here and he actually decided to take a nibble off this. I believe it's a type of Grevillea, I could be completely wrong, but yeah, he had a little bite on that and a little bit of a taste as well, which would have been something completely different to what he's seen for a while. Of course, first and foremost, this is for the reptiles themselves and a little bit of enrichment in their lives, as I keep saying, but it's also for me. I mean, who doesn't want to come into their reptile room and see something that actually looks pretty? You know, uh, 
Long gone are my days of keeping Tupperware containers in mass. You know, this is just where it's at for me nowadays. Seeing animals actually interacting in a somewhat naturalistic enclosure, I get you can never really replicate the wild in a tank, but you know, it comes pretty close when you can see things like this. This is what we waited for. Take my hand, we'll make it somehow. We can't miss out. Mrs. Wiggles, my Kimberly Rock monitor, she was probably one of the lizards that actually interacted with what I put in the most. You can see all sorts of old branches there and, you know, palm fronds and things like that that I've just had piling up there for ages. She gets into those occasionally, but now that there's some gum branches in there that are nice and fresh, she thought she'd maybe get up there and give them a bit of a smell and also see if she could actually use them, like the old one that she's about to step onto here, as a little bit of a perch to get onto that mesh roof. She loves getting up there and giving a good bask underneath the UV and warming up her stomach. She does have access to it via the, the actual giant gum branch that's in there, but seeing her actually interact with these tiny little thin twigs is something that I don't often get to see. And I think a lot of keepers maybe don't have this sort of stuff inside of their enclosures, so they don't get to see these sorts of behaviours. You know, she's kind of weighing up pros and cons and risks and things on actually stepping on those little tiny thin sticks but it was just cool to see her kind of try to figure it out and just see what makes her tick. This won't be my heartache, no This will be your mistake, oh Go ahead and run Go ahead and run, run, run This will be your mistake, oh It won't be my heartache, no Go ahead and run Now go ahead and run It was fantastic to see these Gil and I actually interacting with the bushes that I've put in there and kind of use it like a little bit of a hide. Where these little gum branch holders or the little pipe holders are, they kind of help cover up a couple of the hollows. And as you can see here on the left hand side where this bit of wattle is, it's really packed in there. So down in the left hand corner, eventually, we will see just the little tail of another Gil and I making it into a hollow down there. This won't be my heartache, no. 
Well, my day certainly got away from me. All the lights have been off here for a little while now, and I completely forgot to film an outro. So guys, with that being said, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did enjoy this reptile related content, make sure you go and subscribe to the channel. If you can, drop the video a like and a comment as well. It'll help put YouTube's little algorithm and put me back up there. And if you did want to support the channel even further, guys, make sure you go and check out Teespring. You can get yourself some merch. You can also support the channel over on Patreon as well if you want to get some early access videos and some extra content depending on the tier you join. Alrighty, guys, with that being said, take care, and I'll catch you on the next video.